Blinken lied to Congress about Israeli war crimes because he knows he'll get away with it. As Israel butchers hundreds of civilians in its latest attacks on Lebanon, leaked documents have surfaced revealing that U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken knowingly lied to Congress about Israel's siege warfare against civilians in Gaza. ProPublica's Brett Murphy, who has been covering aspects of this story for months, has a new article out titled, Israel Deliberately Blocked Humanitarian Aid to Gaza, Two Government Bodies Concluded, Antony Blinken Rejected Them. In it, we learn that both USAID and the State Department's Bureau of Population, Refugees, and Migration produced two separate reports this past spring concluding that Israel was deliberately blocking much-needed humanitarian aid from Palestinian civilians in Gaza, which under U.S. law should have led to the suspension of U.S. weapons supplies. Blinken dismissed these findings, as did the rest of the headless cohort known as the Biden administration. Days after receiving these reports, Blinken delivered a statement to Congress that he knew to be false, saying, We do not currently assess that the Israeli government is prohibiting or otherwise restricting the transport or delivery of U.S. humanitarian assistance. This was a lie. Blinken's own people were telling him Israel was obstructing aid, but he lied to Congress about it in order to ensure that Israel would keep receiving the weapons it needs to keep killing Palestinian and Lebanese civilians. This is what happens when you don't prosecute your war criminals. Blinken lied to Congress that Israel wasn't assessed to have been blocking aid when both USAID and the State Department's Refugees Bureau had indeed assessed that the Israeli government is doing precisely that, because he knew he'd never be jailed for lying in facilitation of horrific war crimes. Blinken has watched George W. Bush's entire cabinet not only walk free, but continue to have high-profile careers in government, punditry, think tanks, and the military-industrial complex when they all should have been caged for two decades now. He watched CIA officials like Michael Hayden lie to Congress about the agency's torture program without ever facing any consequences. He watched Director of National Intelligence James Clapper lie to Congress about the NSA's surveillance program without ever facing any consequences. He knew he could lie to Congress about some of the worst atrocities his nation has ever participated in, because he knew there would never be any consequences for this. None of the world's worst people are in prison, but if you ever did anything to try to bring them to justice yourself, you'd spend the rest of your life behind bars, or be executed. The law doesn't exist to protect ordinary people from the worst of our society. It exists to protect the worst of our society from ordinary people. It's worth noting here that while powerful men in Washington break the law and lie in facilitation of mass atrocities, the U.S. is executing black men without evidence of their guilt. The state of Missouri just executed a man named Marcellus Williams, despite objections from prosecutors, jurors, and the victim's own family due to a lack of solid evidence that he actually committed the murder he was convicted of. Days earlier, Khalil Divine Black Son Allah was executed in North Carolina despite the key witness in his case recanting his testimony against him. Both men were black, and both men were Muslim. As men with white skin lie with impunity to help butcher brown-skinned civilians in the Middle East, I personally find this noteworthy. This has been going on for a long time. In 1902, the renowned attorney, Clarence Darrow, said the following in a speech to inmates at the Cook County Jail in Chicago, quote, Those men who own the earth make the laws to protect what they have. They fix up a sort of fence or pen around what they have, and they fix the law so the fellow in the outside cannot get in. The laws are really organized for the protection of the men who rule the world. They were never organized or enforced to do justice. We have no system for doing justice, not the slightest in the world. End quote. It's just as true in 2024 as it was in 1902.